So, Mark Sidious, we have a guest here yeah, to yeah. open up uh, room two. We have the granddaddy. The we granddaddy have, of them all. Yeah, we have granddaddy. Of, the reason for this show, I mean, let's yeah, be honest. We have the granddaddy of Star Wars talk. Mm-hmm. Harloff. Oh, the Pablo Hidalgo was coming in. <laughs> <laughs> Harloff, Darth Harloff is coming in to Darth sort Harloff. of uh, tee us off a little bit of. Uh, we've been bringing people in for the open, right? We've been bringing people in for the open, and uh, it's been really fun. But we've decided to bring him in because it's been a slow news week for Star Wars. There's not yeah. a lot of news out there. Christian, have you heard about Kathleen Kennedy? I've heard of her. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, look, look. Like, I'm being... She produces Star Trek, right? Let's, she, get, let's get real here for a second. Yeah. Okay, this show is about saber rattling, all right? <laughs> Mostly. Like like in a nice way, right? Like <laughs> yeah, in a, right. Like, a, like in an operatic ballet kind of way. And there has been some saber rattling around the office mm. about Kat Kennedy, okay? Oh, yeah. Now, I've, I'm torn about this because I've been very clear... That can't, can't, you can't tell the st- like this is my cliche. You can't tell the story of Hollywood without mentioning Cat Kennedy. It's Absolutely, impossible. it's impossible, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. However, and I remember this because you and I had this conversation like days after I saw The Force Awakens. The first thing I told you was Cat Kennedy's got to go. You know, I, I, I mean, you know, it. it was and I was thing. on the opposite side of that. Oh, that's right. Very much so. V- vehemently, yeah. if that's a word, on the opposite yeah, side of that. Very right? much so. Yeah. yeah. And then the Last Jedi came around. Right. It was a little bit before that, but yes. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. And but then, you know, the the whole analogy of the coach for me is mm-hmm. what like I love this team. This is my favorite team. Star Wars is my favorite entertainment franchise. I don't know if the head coach is that great. Okay. But anyway, the rattling that's been going on is a slight difference of opinion between Harloff and Riley. Yep. About Cat Kennedy. So that's why Harloff is here. That's why he's here. I will say I might be taking the air out of this because. Oh. You change your mind I'm, on it? I'm not changing my mind on how much I like her. <laughs> okay. How much I'd like some of the we decisions all like her. in. Let's just be very clear. I mean, but some of the yeah. decisions in Last Jedi, I stand behind. However, to his point, I was talking to him more. I was talking to him more. Talking to him more. Being like, ah. However, uh, let's do this first, Christian. Uh, your thoughts on Kathleen Kennedy, three-year extension on her deal. Yeah, I mean, I think people are losing their minds. Those people who are against Kathleen Kennedy are losing their minds that that this means, uh oh, all the bad decisions are going to be made. She's going to be there for all three years. It doesn't mean that. I think right. Mark Ellis on Collider Live said it best. What it means is that they sign this contract with her. That if she chooses to leave in a year, it's it's also she, she's made a lot of money for them. She ha, she's in good grace with them, and they offered her this. And maybe it's also from a way that, they, that after a year she wants to leave, you know, right, and, and find right. something. Like and they leave on good graces. That right, they, right, they right. sign this this particular contract up. So, and the other thing, it doesn't necessarily mean that, that that inside of this contract it doesn't say, hey, we want you to bring somebody on to help you creatively as well. It just means that she's upping her three year deal to run Lucasfilm. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I've also made it very clear, and I stick stick by it. I don't like where you said Kathleen Kennedy should go. I'm not on the train of she should go. I'm on the train that she shouldn't be running the the creative by herself because fair enough. She's an incredible producer. No one's a di- denying that here. Yeah, One of the yeah, best yeah. of all times. Yeah, she knows how to make movies. Yeah. The point I made at Collider Live the other day was that the thing is that if you're just going to make in movies, Kathleen Kennedy is the one you want to do that. What Marvel has done, and it's not easy to do as the DCEU has proven, it's not easy to make all these movies inside of a timeline in one connecting canon. It's not easy to do that, but there's a way to do it. And I brought up Edgar Wright, and I'll bring it up here. Edgar Wright was signed on to do Ant-Man years before the MCU was even a thing. Mm. When he then was still involved with it. This is as the MCU started to really take shape. They said, hey, Edgar Wright, we don't want you to do that version of it anymore. We want you to do the MCU because that's the story we're telling now. Mm. And Edgar Wright goes, no, thank you. I want to do an Edgar Wright movie. And they and they, and they they split. Right. Kathleen Kennedy is handing out Edgar Wright movies right now. Ryan Johnson, you can make whatever movie right, you want. Right. Ryan jo- uh, JJ, make whatever you yeah. want. And... Colin Trevorrow, which is for me the most intriguing one. Well, whatever it is, you can make whatever you want, but the problem is if it doesn't fit in, oh, we're having problems, well, I'm going to bring in Tony Gilroy, now he's going to fix it. I'm going to bring in this because there's no narrative. There's no overall fix because it's already been said. Ryan Johnson said, yeah, they let me do whatever I want, basically. I didn't have to follow anything. And I don't blame Ryan Johnson. Everybody blames Ryan Johnson. Ryan Johnson made the movie he wanted to make. It's on the creatives of of Lucasfilm, the Kevin Feige's, if you will, to say that's not where we're going with this. Oh, that sounds amazing. 
amazing. That sounds great, Ryan. Whatever you want to do there, in your vision, you're a talented filmmaker, go with it. And he is. But they let him go with it, and it just didn't, it, it didn't fit all the way. Like, there are people who love The Last Jedi, but there's clearly a section that do not. Yeah. Right. What you need in the second movie of that franchise, you want to get everyone on board. So I have no problem with people like Ken Knapsack, Riley, love The Last Jedi. I have no problem with those people. But you cannot deny that there is a section like yourself, and I'm on the side of, like, I think it's a fine movie, but right. I would rather have a different movie for the second one. I, yeah, I and get that. Well, here, here's some, some very uh, intrepid fans came to me and shared a in wired a, uh, a what? In a vision? In a, uh, I have no <laughs> idea. They shared with me a, an article in Wired that came out right before yeah. Force Awakens Wired in 2015. Is Wired is still a thing. No, I love Wired. I'm kidding. And J.J. Uh, Abrams basically said that he did meet with Ryan Johnson. Yeah. A number of times with script work that the, the, the idea, because you were telling me this and I believe mm -hmm. a, a lot of this, but I, I keep pushing back. I've said it on here about like, how can they not talk to each other and have those meetings and have that connection between Force Awakens and The Last Jedi? Because look, and I've said this a bunch of times and I've gotten, so first of all, before I go there, I want to address what Christian said really quick, because the whole theory about signing her um, signing a three-year extension, mm -hmm. it's, it's actually very astute and very accurate in the history of deals and the history of Hollywood and even the history of sports. When you get those extensions, doesn't automatically mean that you're actually going to – that the intention from either party is to finish the deal. Yeah. Right. But it's a very – it's a win-win from a PR perspective. It doesn't mean she's locked for right. three years. Right. It doesn't mean she's locked for three years. It, means, it doesn't mean that there's no – hope for other changes that could be beneficial, right? right? So that's actually a really interesting take that makes me feel a little less trapped, yeah. you know, for the next three years. Um, but, you know, to, um, you know, to go with what you're saying, what were you saying again? So <laughs> because, well, like here was that, because that point is really interesting because like Kathleen Kennedy for the next three years makes me feel like, oh, okay, we're going to get like disjointed, unfocused, uh, like un umbrellaed stories for the next three years, and that makes me a little bummed out, right? We're gonna get this disparate, th th this this disparate Ryan Johnson trilogy over here. We're gonna get the television show over here by uh, the dude from Iron Man, which I'm actually Favreau, Favreau which I'm Favreau. very excited it's my about. My favorite thing I'm looking forward. Yeah, to. me yeah. too, me too. Uh, and then you have the you know Benioff and Weiss thing going. Mm -hmm. That's supposed to be a movie, right? A series trilogy. of movies, series no, of not movies. trilogy, Trilog series, series of movies. Series of movies. So you get all this other, you know, shit. Who's who's keeping it all together creatively? I still think is the hole that they need to address, and they need to address it publicly. Yeah, I, I'm with you on that. That's that's the thing I've always went. That doesn't seem make so much sense to me. So somebody did send me this Wired article about J.J. Abrams saying, "I shared dailies with Ryan Johnson. I've read his script. Yeah, he read that. my script. Yeah. All these things that that were said right before 2015." And so when I read this. That's where I push back a bit, like how – then they were on oh, collaborating. No, no. See, no, I don't push back oh. at all. I think it adds to it. I think that the fact that – yeah, of course. There's two so was it that just them and Kathleen Kennedy is doing yeah, – then but look, moving Ryan, on? And you're, a creative, at... you're a creative dude. Yeah. Okay? And, and as a creative dude, that means you have creative expression. Sure. Right? And your creative expression is in the way of a, a script or a video that you make or whatever. There's a bunch sure. of different things, right? Right. Uh, when you show that, like you and Ellis are both on Movie Talk – Right, you both sure. work on movie talk. Um, if one day you host movie talk mm -hmm. and Ellis, you know Ellis is not going to be there, and you tell Hel hey Ellis, I plan to do this, this, and that, you're probably going to get like thumbs up feedback. Right. Okay. Like that's kind of to Christian's point. Without that dictator up top saying, "Are you guys fucking talking? Like, who's you know what's going on here? Mm -hmm. You know, like are you guys following the vision? Like, is this really a collaboration? That sounds to me like it was just like a pleasantry over like." You know, some donuts and a coffee and like yeah, maybe was, a joint. It was, you know? it was like, listen, he's working. He's, we also have to remember this. J.J. Abrams was out after Force Awakens. He was yeah. out. He wanted, right. he wanted out. He didn't want to come back. So he's like, you know, whatever. Why, just, Why is that, by the way? Because he wanted to be with his family. He wanted to do some other things. And, and he just, he was out. So he, there was a lot of work. But remember, he didn't want to do the first one. It was, a, it was a conversation between Kathleen Kennedy and him to do it. He did it. Um, and then when he's out, of course he's going to share his, his script and to let him know what, what the hell's going on. You're collaborating with the guy, the next guy who's doing the movie. 
It's just that when the things are starting to change from after you give that person that script, and you can read the initial script and say, okay, yeah, there's things I want to do. I would, I'm jealous. I want to you, you give a nice PR spin, whatever you want to do. But when you see that there are things inside of this movie, the second movie, that, to quote Mark Hamill, fundamentally go a completely yeah, 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 yeah. different way than what you've set up. Like, everything that was set up in Force Awakens was completely different yeah, than yeah, Last yeah. Jedi. Yeah. So then, it's not a surprise to me, and you'll never hear this, you'll never hear it in, in For Real, that J.J. Uh, was like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> you know, he's, he's, yeah. at, at this point, he's, pro he's probably saying, or what the hell, sorry, I broke my own rule. No, what no, the no, hell, what the hell is going on? Yeah. And he goes, and, and so he's probably now, is because from what I believe, and I know that people are like, oh, that's just hard love, but I'm, just ask yourself this question. Yeah. Why did I change so dramatically from saying Kathleen Kennedy is the absolutely the person that's right. running creative? Right. Yeah, yeah. Why did I change that point of view? Why did I change all this? And what I will tell you that on the same philosophy, I am convinced without a shadow of a doubt that J.J. Abrams was not happy with Last Jedi. Without yeah. a shadow of a yeah, doubt, I'm I would with go hundred percent. I would go uh, to I would go to my grave on. Yeah, we okay. talked about that last week. Yeah. You know, yeah. I a hundred percent agree with that. And why I, he came back? Why do you think he? That's why yeah. he came back. That's why I'm very excited about Episode Nine. Like, yeah. I think we're gonna get a, a good sequel to Force Awakens with Episode Nine. Anyway, but that was last week's episode. But I, I'm I'm totally with that. But let me ask you one question, Christian. Um, the do you think that Star Wars will make some kind of announcement about giving some kind of creative like leadership to somebody publicly like knighthood yes do i think they should or do i think they will both should 100 uh, yeah. um only because Agreed. again and it's nothing it's it's just to just keep being a broken record kathleen kennedy is the person you want to produce your movies yes you want that creative head to say this is what i need this is what i'm thinking of yeah. kathleen kennedy goes i'm gonna make that phone call i'm gonna get you that director top three producer all the time i'm gonna get you that location i'm gonna make sure that that shoot goes that way i'm gonna get you that line producer that's what kathleen kennedy she's gonna, gonna produce does. the hell out of this that thing. is what she yeah. does yeah. Yeah. yes but she is not the one because i can tell you she's not an, an a, She's not an ultra Star Wars fan. She likes the property, right? But Kevin Feige digs in and he knows this stuff and he knows where to go. That he's there from the whatever is happening. Any he's there from writing the script, all from the meetings, things. the, the yeah. development meetings, the yeah. the directors, all that stuff. She, she's I'm not an uber Star Wars fan. She doesn't. She she doesn't like. There's two inside baseball stuff for her too. Like she doesn't. She just sees them as movies. And a lot of people will Star Wars are just movies. It's not to the hardcore fan base. Right, right, right. That's it's a what, philosophy. It has you know. I hate to use that word, but it has characteristics of, like... A religion. Yeah. It does. It's a, yeah. do, it, The Jedi way is, that, is an actual religion somewhere, In too. Australia. Yeah, in Australia. They put, it, <laughs> yeah. they put it on the ballot. You, you still haven't read that book. I've been, you would, yes. It would be your favorite book you've ever read. I've yes. told you a million times. Yeah, yeah, Star yeah. Wars the Conquered the, the Galaxy. galaxy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've told you that so many times. Yeah. Yeah, Chris yeah, Taylor. Yeah. He has told me that a million times. You yeah. would love it. So, so it look, down. before, before um, Harloff you know, leaves us, yeah. Um, what's going on with this Dave Filoni thing? I know Harloff has been a huge Filoni guy from the very beginning. I am too because I'm a huge Clone Wars fan, and I saw some episodes last night, like eight of them, and I just couldn't stop watching. We'll talk about that later. But um, yeah. what's going on with Filoni? Well, there's there's a report out there from our friends at Making Star Wars that are saying that uh, Dave Filoni will be directing some of the live action series at uh, for the John Favreau series. Oh, really? So he's yeah. taking the next step. He's taking the next step. I've been calling this on Jedi Council for a, like this yep. is the, was this is a, this is this easy, is a no brainer. This was the easiest prediction that anyone could have made. So it's yeah. not like a Nostradamus pick. Yeah. Right. The, right, right. If you think about it, you yeah. go back into Dave Filoni and John Favreau have worked together on Clone Wars. Yep. They worked together on Rebels. F Favreau was a, He's been a voice in both. He was a of voice. Those. Yeah. Oh really? Those. Yeah. There's, there's, who is there's, he in Clone Wars? Um, I forget. He was in. He was one of the Mandalorians. Mandalorians, right? Um, yeah. yeah. And he was in. And he was also in. In. Um, in Rebels, but he anyway. The point is, they've worked together many times. They, they were taking pictures on Lucasfilm. Favreau is a huge Star Wars fan. Has been many times. Has been rumored around. He's rumored around the Obi Wan Kenobi movie. He was right. rumored all these things, and he gets this show. This is going to be the best narrative we've gotten for Star Wars in a long time. And Filoni taking that leap into yeah. live action was a no brainer. That's where he's going to get tested, yeah. and then it'll carry into on. film. And yeah. like, look, yes. I, I've gone with Christian to a lot of the premieres and. Um, Christian almost has 
you know, dare I say, kind of a, almost like a, like a friendship with Dave Filoni, yeah. right? So have you ever spoken to Dave Filoni directly about his ambitions for what he wants to do in the world of Star Wars long term? It's funny you ask that. There's a show that I worked, there's this network I'm on, Collider Video, <laughs> and I did an hour-long video. I know. I don't know. I know you do. And uh, I asked him about inside of that inside. How of that do you interview. spell Collider? I'm going to look I, it up right now. I, <laughs> jo I joke about it because I've, I, I've asked him every time I see him. The first, the first time I was off camera, and I saw him at Celebration, and we talked, and I said, when are you doing like... No, no, it's not true. It was the first time I said this was at the Force Awakens premiere. Yeah. And I said to him, I said, when are they going to give you the keys to the direct the movie? He's like, you keep singing it. And he's like, right. I want to do it. And he wants to do it. So oh, when yeah. you guys are talking about it, it's like two buddies that are like, yo, like, yes, I want to be the quarterback. He's like, just, yeah, I want to start. This is my problem, another problem that bounces back to Kathleen Kennedy. I believe in my heart of hearts, the way she sees it is... Those are the right. t those are the TV guys. Those are the f she's old school. Those right. are the film guys. That's the animation guy. Yeah, he knows a lot about Star Wars, but he's an animation guy. Give him a, give him an episode of the right, TV right. show, which is not necessarily fair, right? To box it, it's people not in. fair at all. Yeah, yeah. How many people have moved over from animation? Brad Bird. Yeah. Okay. Travis Knight. Travis Knight. Yeah. Yes, exactly. There are so many examples um, out there. Okay, there's another one. What's his name? Uh, Walt Disney. Walt Disney. Yeah. Sure. Walt, well, like all of that. Yeah. And if he knows the Star Wars. Well, here's the thing. He knows Star Wars better than she does. She does, yes. And he, that's is, the thing. he is no. He's the only other one besides George Lucas yeah. that I think. I think he is the apprentice to George. He's Lucas. He's the heir apparent. I yeah, think he's, yeah. I've been calling him the heir apparent, and that's what that's what he is. With all your points to the la from Force Awakens to the Last Jedi to your point, Fernandez about script work, writing, J.J. Abrams maybe talking, showing some dailies to Ryan Johnson. I've learned in the past. A lot of people. What do we do, Christian? A lot of people are not going to go against you with box office. They're not going to go against you with certain predictions that you have. Star Wars, I'm not going to go against this because I know he knows what he's talking about. All of this stuff you're bringing up makes a lot of sense to me. Right. It does. I love Kathleen Kennedy. I love her as a, a, a producer. Yeah. I'm starting to really see this. I'm starting to really change my mind on a lot of the... Like I just, it's so hard for me to believe that a billion dollar franchise like this is that they're not more on the same page. It would help her though, dude. It would help it, her it, so it much. It would. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. she just and would I'm seeing a lot more. Bring someone in. Yeah. It would make her life so much easier if she took someone. And there's no, there's well, nobody else to do this but Dave Filoni because he's in house. Something, he's there. Something that we've talked about on this show before that I've never gotten Christian's take on is that, and this is I pieced this together through the interview. Um, that uh, George Lucas did um, with our dude, I always forget his name, the guy from Frosty. PBS. No, not from Frosty. <laughs> and not Perry either. Perry, there's actually a Perry George Lucas yeah, interview on the channel. Yeah, totally. yeah. Yeah. But um, so George Lucas, when they did the original deal, okay, uh, was signed on to be the creative steward of the brand moving forward. I mean, it was part of the deal. Now, um, then they threw the treatment some way. Right. Correct. Then, then they said, "Hey, we want to go a little bit different direction." Yeah. This is all coming out of his mouth. You can, he was he was brought in to be an advisor. That's yeah. what it was. Advisor, uh, but, creative advisor. But no, no. I and think they don't have to advise. Yeah, that's. I'm telling you, it was creative advisor. I mean, yeah. in that. So look, mm -hmm. we none of us have read the contract. So it's, it's all while. conjecture. It's, it's all conjecture. It's all conjecture yeah. from, from 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 all parties. All we have are the interviews that they've done together. Mm -hmm. Right. That, that's really all we have. And in those interviews. In the first one, Kathleen Kennedy and George Lucas are talking like they're going to be working together for years to come. Yeah. Okay? Like, le there's no denying that is the context of that interview. Then in the interview that he does, Charlie Rose is the guy he does. Charlie Rose. Yeah. The Got interview it. he did with Charlie Rose, he says that there came a point where the boss, Disney, said, hey, um, we like the script that you and Arndt did. There's a lot of cool stuff about it. We want to take it in a different direction. Okay? You have no choice. Like, either help us. Or like you have to help us. Like yeah, we, we are paid you four billion. Yeah, we're You're taking it. We're to taking go it in a different way. direction. And supposedly at this point, Lucas said, "Okay, I'm out." Okay, and no longer involved on any level. Now my theory is is that they never replaced what they thought they were going to have with George Lucas as this kind of creative steward, an advisor, right. uh, something advisor, like that, advisor, whatever it is. What, yeah, right. I but, get what you're but saying. The, like like what Mark Echo calls the creative north star, mm. right? They never replaced that. And I think to some degree they were like, oh, well, we got J.J. Abrams. J.J. Abrams and George Lucas have been known to be good friends. I, I know, I mean, I've read that George Lucas recommended J.J. Abrams himself. He was excited about J.J. when him and Art were writing the script. In his head, he had J.J. Abrams, like, pegged all along to, to uh, direct. Um, but then to your point, J.J. was just, like, one and done. You know, he, he wasn't ready to say, okay, I will... I will shield, you know, the, you know, like like the rebellion from the empire for the rest of my life. Like I'll, I'll, 
I'll, I'll, I'll take the oath and I'm a Jedi forever and I'll give up everything else. Mm. He wasn't ready to do that, you know? Right. Has, J.J. hasn't made another movie since Star Wars, right? And he's produced a ton of stuff. But yeah, but he, he has hasn't not directed, directed anything. No. Yeah. yeah. So look, I, I think that that's what it boils down to, right? They don't have that creative North Star. I'm with Christian. I'd give it to Filoni only because, like, I you know, the more and more I think about it, like, and last night, you know, I was watching these Clone Wars episodes, and I'm thinking, man, is the reason why I, I like, kind of retconned my love for the prequels? Because to be perfectly honest with you, when I saw the first one and the second one, I had vitriol in my of blood. the prequels? Yeah. Okay. You know, like, I just, like, eh. And then Mark Echo invited me to go to the premiere of Sith, right? So it was very exciting to be at the premiere of this like thing that I've loved my whole life. Mm -hmm. And the movie was kind of dark and kind of cool, right? There was Star Wars Galaxies. But then there was Clone Wars, right? Mm -hmm. When I really started getting into Clone Wars, I think Clone Wars like changed my perception of the prequels completely. You just yeah. described why Favreau series is going to be the best thing we've seen yeah. ever in Star Wars because mm -hmm. of where we are today in general on how we in how we take in entertainment. The yeah. best stuff that we watch right now are sh is streaming on Netflix. Bingeable yeah. content of good storytelling. Where yeah. you, it, Eight hours is one long... Like, What's our big problem a lot of these movies, that these big big blockbuster movies? There's not enough time for character development. Right. I didn't really feel... I didn't know who that person was. That arc went nowhere. That's usually a lot of the yeah. big things. You're not going to get that in this series. In this series, you're going to be so immersed in the world, yeah. and it's going and they're going to spend a lot of money. It's bounty hunters, it. right? Is that what supposedly it is? It's, it takes place after Jedi, so you can see stuff after Last Jedi, after Return of the Jedi. Return Return of the Jedi. Jedi. So you're going to see. Uh, I think there's a, a there'll be Mandalorian stuff, especially if Favreau and and Filoni are involved. So can you they'll... imagine if they if they bring Hamill into it somehow, de aging? I no think way, probably, right? Sebastian Stan would probably be a good choice. Yeah, I think as, as, as young like, Luke, as young Luke, be cool people have talked about it for a while. But you know, to quote, it's irrelevant at this point because right. it, whatever it is, it's going to be it's going to be good storytelling. And what I can also, I, Kathleen Kennedy, from what I from rumblings, is that she's really not very involved in the TV side of it. Favreau has again free reign to kind of make yeah. the narrative with Filoni and do this stuff wow. too. Favreau's damn good, isn't he? Let Favreau produced a lot of television. What people don't realize. Too. Oh, has he's, he? Yeah, he's done a lot. He's done television. He's been involved in television. Um, he's a guy you want because, and he's a guy inside of the television. Era. Look at Pearl Mutter and, and Feige, two different guys. Mm -hmm. You can say what you want about Pearl Mutter inside of the film universe. Terrible, Great example. Terrible yeah. in, right. in film. He has done pretty well inside of the, regardless of what you think of Defenders and all that stuff too. He's he's made a universe there, right? Yeah, yeah. Favreau's going to do that. And with Filoni involved, we're in good shape right now when it comes to television. That's something to be excited about. Now, when you jump as far as the, the whole Lucas question, right? it's essentially, I think, what happened is that they didn't have a creative head. What they said was, well, you know, we don't need an advisor. We've got our story group team, which they never utilize. <laughs> right. But we have them. <laughs> and then what yeah, we'll right. also do is, look, Kathleen Kennedy goes, I've made, I, I'm Trust me in making movies. I've got this guy, J.J. Abrams. He knows how to make a Star Wars movie. He's great. And then I'm going to sign on Ryan Johnson, great filmmaker, and just let them do their thing. Right. Yeah. They know Star Wars. And let them do their thing. Trevorrow, oh, this kid Gary there was, let them do their thing. Uh, Lord Miller, do your thing. Oh, oh. Right. I shouldn't have let them just do their thing. Right. I should have connected all this and had somebody like a Filoni, like a Feige, like a whoever that's what you need. Yeah. I, First of all, you know what? A, is that a fireable, like, not a fireable offense, but is that an offense to not renew a contract? No, because she made a lot of money. Yes. She did make a lot of exactly. money. Exactly. She, she made, made a lot. She made more money than all three prequels yeah. combined. She yes. won, she, you look sports terms, she won a lot of championships. She only, she, yes. she only had one losing season. Right. Right. And the, right. The, fair, look, first of all, it's, that is the bottom line. That yes. is the bottom line. She made a, a, a crap ton of money. Yeah. Uh, those three movies, Force billions Awakens, of dollars. yeah, billions. Force Awakens, Last Jedi, and Rogue, Rogue One, One all cracked a billion. Only three movies in history, yes, only three movies in history to ever crack over a hundred million dollars in December. Remember that, yeah, those they, three, yeah, those yeah. three they stuck a big stake in December right. and then because abandoned like, it for Solo. Like, like, like we said last time, uh, Force Awakens is two. Last two billion. Je no, no, uh, two all time. Two all time. Domestic. Last Jedi is like top ten somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Eight. Yeah. So yeah. That, that's your answer. Yeah. yeah. That's your answer. Yeah. But you can say, and all your points, of course. I, like I'm sitting here listening, going, yes, yes, I, I get it. Here's where I'm going to pose a question: Could JJ save a little bit of that divisiveness from Episode Eight yeah. by connecting it somehow? We don't know yet. To Episode Eight, 
Force Awakens, J.J. Abrams is on record saying, I'm going to unite the entire saga. I put Get a guarantee. Some... Yeah. I put a guarantee. That's where I'm going to. I put, Prequels, yeah. original sequels. We're going to get this one, hopefully, wonderful kind of satisfying thing. And I think if anybody can do it, it is J.J. Put a guarantee that there will be fan service. And yes. People put a negative connotation on that word. I'm not saying I don't. Mm. I look at... Um, I look at last season of Game of Thrones, and I know that people go, that's my, that's my point exactly. Too much fan service, and the hardcore book people don't like the last season. I love last season of Game yeah, of Thrones. Me too. I wow. love it. So I missed that because I watched that last season. Yeah, I good. binged all the way through and, and to get to that last season and went right it's into good. it, and it was incredible. That's what, because, there was, because the problem I had with Game of Thrones for a while, now I'm okay with it because I got myself a pretty a, a great season – Everything was dire inside of mm. Game of Thrones. It was like, okay, now you like that? That person's dead. Why? Because this is sad. Yeah. And this is a sad. And, and, and so what I think JJ's going to do, you're going to see tie-ins to the entire trilogy, or mm. trial, all the saga. Yeah. You're going to see characters that you never expected to come back. Yeah. You're going to see moments that you never thought could happen. The, he's going to tie it all together, and he's going to put, there's going to be a lot of like, oh my God. Yeah. I can't believe that happened. Yeah. You, yeah. Great. You know, it's like people who rag on fan service, it's kind of like if you ever go to a concert, right? You mm -hmm. know, and, and you go to a concert and, um, and you're like, fuck, man, like they haven't played Freebird yet. You right. Know? You want right. them to play their greatest hits. Of course they're going to play Not their, their new stuff. Hits. I mean, you know, play the new stuff. Sure. You know, but the new, have you noticed Put the it new in the stuff? middle of some of their right. favorites. The new right? stuff's always in the middle. Right. Yeah. The new stuff is never at the beginning and it's never at the end. Right. You know, so um, look, I have so much high hopes for uh, episode nine. Because I do agree that I think they're going to give me what I want, right? Yeah. Which is that deep dive into the dark side, right? Like, to me, that's always been kind of like my favorite thing about Star Wars is like this, you know, that kind of, you know, trial of of the temptation to the dark side, yeah. you know? Like, for me, when the first time, I'll never forget it, the first time I saw Return of the Jedi and like, um, you know, this is obvious, but I was a kid. I was a little kid. But... When I saw Luke, I was like, oh, my God, Luke is turning into Darth Vader. Yeah. You know? And he's dressed in black. He's dressed in black. He's got a mechanical arm. He's, like, doing, you know, the, he's doing the force choke to the Gamorrean guards. Yeah, like he's turning. Like the dark side is actually slowly seducing him. And people say, well, if you hate Snoke in Last Jedi because there's no backstory, then you should hate the Emperor because there's no backstory there. No, the, the Emperor in that last movie gets a lot of exposition. There's a lot yeah. of difference with that, too. Yeah. 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 The Emperor, by the way, was a character that was just introduced in that first movie. There was no history and history and history of Star Wars back then. Right, right. right. So that's a, a very good point, there too. There is a history of Star right, Wars right. now. It's not apples to apples. You're right. No, You're right. But that's right. what I'm saying. Then The reason we think of the Emperor in the original trilogy and go, well, he was so developed. We have the prequels. We have all of that that we know about. I get the point there of Snoke and everything, but listen, I want to get back to... <laughs> Did you say something about Snoke, though? Please. Yeah, the same thing, though, He's too. coming back. You think? There's Ex going to be something in Snoke. Yes. Yeah. Explanation of Snoke will come yes. back. Explana I totally Everyone, agree. everyone yell, uh, wonders about the Ray parentage thing. Yeah. I think the where Ray comes from will be answered. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think I, that, too. Yeah. I think all of that's going to happen. I feel it's going to happen because of J.J., not fan service. I think he can work it in organically because he's a great storyteller. And I mean, everybody's looking at Chris Terrio, who's like, oh, Batman v. Superman. Oh, my God, suspect. Justice League. No, and Chris Terrio did oh, Argo. Macquarie. It's Macquarie. Sorry, yeah, I'm yeah. Macquarie. Chris Terrio, I think, is a fantastic writer, and the DC was not his problem. It wasn't his fault. Right, because he's writing episodes. He's nine. writing with... JJ. Okay, but okay, and again, like, and thanks to the listeners out there who want us to do the Lost Jedi. Maybe one day we'll do it. Um, you know, <laughs> we just gotta get, get in on our documentary, The Lost Jedi. What? I'm good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we need we we need the right reporter to go in there. Um, Perfect. So that episode nine script, right? That was commissioned when uh, Force Awakens was commissioned and Last Jedi was commissioned with Trevor or Trevor or whatever, however you say his name. Mm -hmm. Is that completely scrapped, or did they bring in Terrio, and now in the credits you'll see Colin Trevorrow and Chris Terrio in the credits? Scrapped. Like Michael Arndt is in, is gets lead credit on 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 Force Awakens. I think JJ took a stick of dynamite to Terrio uh, to uh, Trevorrow script, yeah, and, I and think just so too. started anew. Yeah. So do you think like let, let, let's oh, just make a what? little prediction now? Okay, 
is Chris is is uh, Colin Trevorrow's script going to be in the or is his name going to be in the credits of episode nine? Yes, because they still have relationships in, re, in regards to Jurassic World and all that stuff too. I think they'll give him a credit on it. Okay. That's a totally different. World. But they have a relationship with him. Is what so I mean, you'll that, see this there's maybe a business relationship with him. Maybe story by credit for Trevorrow, like maybe. aren't got. It's 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 possible. I could see it going either way. And okay, I, or okay. I could see a. Colin Trevorrow and A&D instead of the ampersand, which yeah. puts I mean, the, the like, two together. And, and, and I've talked about it to death on the show, but the, but but the thing that gets me excited about that thing is how excited Mark Hamill was about it. Mm. Well, you know, I mean, Trevorrow. Yeah, yeah, he was. Well, that, that was rumored. That was, was that rumored? rumored. That was rumored. The, the the rumor was that he was that he. There was a lot more to do with Luke, in more like a traditional Luke that every that a lot of the Star Wars fans wanted. Yeah. Right. That, that's that's kind of where it went. I think that's why they said that he was on the same page. But same thing with Luke. Luke's going to have a much bigger role and a different role. You think mm -hmm. so? Yeah. Yeah. I do. I think so. Do you buy his theory about it going flashback? Do I buy it? No, um, it's, it's a I mean, it's I mean, a I'm, it's a wish I, rather yeah, than a theory like that's going to happen. Do I like, like it? it? I like it. I like yeah. it. I think that to see more I mean, there's a lot of things you can do with Luke. That because we do know what we all agree on, whether you like the Ryan jo Johnson version or not, we ended with Luke understanding that the Jedi needed to continue. Yes. That the Jedi, that the Force needed to go on, that the Jedi needed to be the ones, because he said, you know, he realized he would not be, he said it to Kylo Ren, I am not the last Jedi. Right, right. And that there is right. more to do. I think his philosophy has changed, even as a Force ghost. So when he's coming back, he's going to be, there's going to be a lot of lessons he's going to be teaching. Yeah. I don't think Jay, uh, Jay I don't think Ray is going to be starting a Jedi Academy, unfortunately, though. Right. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't see how. Is that what the show's about? Like the, uh, you know, the I feel rebuilding like, of the Jedi Order. That would be you well. Mean, I think that show? again. Yeah, yeah. There's echoes. The right. The always the echoes in the Star Wars universe, and I think that it could echo a little bit of Return of the Jedi in that she's not creating a Jedi Order yet. Maybe that will come at the end. No, maybe. I don't think it's gonna happen. I saw a episode. rolling of the eyes. Yeah, I'm not I, gonna lie. It's, I, I want it. Yeah. I don't think th this is the. No, no, no. I'm just saying. By the end of episode nine, nah, we, could, so. we, could, we could we could we could be gonna wrap it up the whole saga. Yeah, yeah. But, but yeah. with alluding to that, she can rebuild a Jedi order, it's but that she's not gonna be doing it during in the movie. movie. That's my yeah, that's yeah, my yeah. point. Look, and maybe it's because I watched literally eight episodes of Clone Wars last night um, to just get my mind off stuff, but. Man, an Ahsoka movie, or just more Ahsoka. Like, there's something about that character. Yeah. You know, there's something about that character where it's like, and, I, and look, I love Ray. I think uh, Daisy Ridley is an incredible actress, but just from a character perspective, the way that they're written, Ahsoka, like, she has a chip on her shoulder. Yeah. Like, she knows that everybody thinks that she's weak and not ready. And not, and then she always proves everyone wrong. Yeah. And she's a tough, tough Jedi. She's a great Jedi. The problem this is this is goes back to our early, or the conversation we started with here too. It's that inside baseball conversation, right? Mm -hmm. Because I think what people get gun uh, gun shy with, right, is the fact that over there that these movies that the outside fan doesn't know who Soak is. That only the hardcore fan knows who it is, but doesn't take into account of what a great character it is. Yeah, and that it doesn't incredible. matter that you yeah. can make a story out of it that will entice people to want to see it. But that's why they went with Old Faithful and tried to get Han, Han Solo. Solo, Boba Fett. See, yeah. and that's Going, that was the bad. It was a bad way to go. Because and that's why I go to your scared. Marvel yeah. Kevin Feige point, where they went Guardians of the Galaxy, and everybody went who and Marvel. Right. Everybody went, First and it was a good. great point. Yeah. It's a great like, point. You can do that in Star Wars. Right. I don't. You can absolutely and, do that in Star Wars. And I'm Wars. telling you that Ahsoka is the one that's best. Like like yeah. people yes. always say, oh, the galaxy is too small. It shouldn't be about the Skywalkers. Oh, okay. The saga films are about the Skywalkers. Yes. Even J.J. Abrams said, I will finish the Skywalker saga. I mean, it's his quote, right? Yes. But if you want to branch out, you want your Guardians of the Galaxy, look at us. Look no further than Ahsoka Tano. Yeah. Anakin Skywalker's Dude, apprentice. Yeah. We could do a trilogy about Ahsoka. Their counter-argument would, would be, well, the difference with Marvel is by the time you got to Guardians... We, were, we already, had all these they movies. They had an established movie that had right. established box office, right? I don't right. know. Star Wars has established box office, but the three movies that established them were the saga films, so they don't count. Right. The You only had Rogue One, which had a lot of problems. Then tying it to Solo, which is not this overall, and another argument to be on, on their side is that this overall narrative mm -hmm. that Marvel has all fits inside the same timeline in a certain amount of time. Sure. Star Wars is all over the board. That's why I think what they would be smart to do, and this is why there is a way to bounce back from this, right? If this Benioff and Weiss thing is the movies that come out every 
two years because people took Iger's comments out of yeah. context. He didn't say that it wasn't going to be once a year. His big thing was that it was it was the six month jump. That was yeah. a mistake. Yeah, you're going to get a, a potential Benioff and Weiss movie. I know you shudder at this potential idea, but I still think Ryan Johnson can pull off a Star Wars movie. I think he can because the difference is that's the one I don't want. Remember though. And, this, and I was against it for a long time, and I said it on Jedi Council too. I've really changed my tune on it because the difference is the one main the, of the Ryan Johnson movie. Yeah, I've okay. changed my tune on it. And the reason why I've changed my the tune trilogy, the Ryan Johnson trilogy, trilogy yeah. because here's why I changed my tune on it. The main reasons that the, the people who didn't like Last Jedi didn't like what he did to Luke, mm-hmm. didn't like his 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 ideas of what. Um, the force was and all mm-hmm. these ideas, right? Mm-hmm. Stuff that had been established inside of the saga. But if you gave him inside of the Star Wars galaxy that had nothing to do with the original saga, things mm-hmm. that you were not attached to, yeah. the guy is a great filmmaker. He's yes. a great filmmaker. So yeah. he gave you new characters, a new place to be, and he gave you Looper inside of the Star Wars yeah. universe, you'd be on yeah, board. Yeah, look, and to that point, I'm not, look... I can't deny that there are, like, if you looked at The Last Jedi in a vacuum, Mm. like, in a complete and total vacuum, there's some really interesting things going on. The relationship between Kylo and Rey jumps off the screen. Love it. It's phenomenal. It really is. Like, like if you look at it in a vacuum, those scenes between Kylo and Rey, even though all the Force Skype, all that aside, it is awesome. Like, you feel this, like... Like almost like this, like star-crossed Romeo and Juliet type of vibe to it. It is absolutely amazing. In the context of the saga films, it's it's completely out of place, in my opinion. Um, or or maybe um, not out of place. That's the wrong way to look at it. It's 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 not where the focus should have been, in my opinion, to continue the threads of Force Awakens. And I think I, you know, like a lot of people don't appreciate how great those scenes are because of it. And look, and you also, in a vacuum, if you don't know all this stuff about Snoke, if you don't know the stuff about the dark side, if you don't know all this stuff about being like a dark side Jedi, that scene in the throne room on its own is actually really, really friggin' cool. Mm. You know, but it, it's not consistent with how powerful Snoke is supposed to be. Like, 15 minutes before, he had whooped his ass. Like, the second he thought Snoke uh, or, or Kylo had anything in his mind to go against him, he like shut him down, you know. Yeah, but uh, he used he used the lightsaber standing in front of Rey, using like I'm going to kill my enemy right now. That hatred so fervent right, in right. him that he mixed up, and it right. was he had the lightsaber going to Snoke. He was going to kill his true enemy. Lo- I, right, right. That's how I read it's it. Like in the Clone that's Wars, what I like, love. All war is based on is based on deceit, right? He, so, he pulled a Sith move, in my opinion. That was a full Sith move, killing yeah, Snoke. Yeah, but look anyway. Um, it's been the a, longest cold opening of all time. Yeah. <laughs> look, look. Let's obviously look again. Rule of two means that there's only two rules, and it's like and we can break them anytime. <laughs> we, we can break them. We're anytime. safe. Yeah, yeah. Look. Um, <laughs> first of all, it's great to have Christian here, um, the granddaddy of the Star Wars talk. Uh, is there anything else we want to get into? How much time do we have? Uh, you know, we got about f- twenty minutes. I'll just stay on. Why yeah, you just stay 20. on? Yeah. Yeah, what else going. do we got? What else do we got? Well, I mean, there's a lot out there. We talked about Kathleen Kennedy. We talked about the idea of Dave Filoni. Um, there, what all else right, do we got right, out there? All right, all right, so look, go before we finish up with Cat Kennedy. Um, Ralph Biscuits. <laughs> Ralph, no. Yes or no? Does Cat Kennedy uh, finish her three years? No. No. Ooh. No. But, I think but, but she makes an announcement on her own that she's that she's decided she'll, to, to it's step down. It's her call. It's yeah. her. We're going to see. This is why I bet Christian agrees with me on this. Um, I, I bet after episode nine crushes at the box office, it will. A um, few months later. She takes the shot off the court. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. She does the oh, okay. Jordan, yep. and then she's out. Yeah. And then she goes, you know what? I'm going to go produce some other things right now. I'm going to go produce another Jurassic World movie right. or something. I'm going to go produce E.T. 2 or it whatever. It is a brilliant PR move. But that's a great point there, though. Here's, yeah. That's the thing. And when and I, I don't want to reiterate that. When I say that she doesn't like love Star Wars, like we love love Star Wars, we, we talk yeah. about it every week. Kathleen Kennedy's not doing a podcast on Star Wars every Thursday, right? She doesn't, <laughs> not, and even even and, and I'm saying even if she if she wasn't <laughs> Kathleen Kennedy, I don't believe that she would. She yeah, just yeah, has fair. never been as outspoken. We think so. What the point that I'm making about that is not because like, hey, she's not a Star Wars fan, so she shouldn't be back in the movies. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is. 
why would you want to do that for the rest of your career right. if that's right. not your passion? Right, right. That's if, fair. Yeah. Because my, my thing, I think you're absolutely correct. I think that she hits episode nine. She just makes all this money and then goes, I've done what I'm going to do. Now I'm going to go take – Oh, who's not going to hire her? Right, like, come on. That, that's what I mean. Like she she's could like, do, she's, she could, yeah. she could walk in Where? anywhere she wants and, and goes. You know what? I'm going to reinvent your Fast and Furious right. franchise Don right Simpson, now. Don Simpson, Kathleen Kennedy, um, uh, the dude from The Godfather, um, Francis uh, Coppola. No, no, the producer. Uh, the kid stays in the picture. Um, oh, Robert. Uh, Robert, Robert Evans. Evans. Robert yeah. Evans. I mean, these are the greatest, uh, you know, producers in the yeah. history of Hollywood. You're like, yeah. you know, uh, the you know the woman is in the Hall of Fame. She's a Hall of Famer. Easily. You know, ten times over. You know, yeah. um, but she look. It's just why would you want it if you're her? If you're yeah. her, it's hit that final shot, walk off the court, and go win a championship for another team. Right, right. That's right. it. It's like, that's all she needs and to do. And appoint something. Maybe leave it and you know leave it better than you found it. Yeah. I, I mean, just made you all this money, Disney. Here, and I've set you up. And I because she can still say she can walk away and say this. I made episode seven, eight, nine. Got all that money. Yeah, I yeah. had a misfire with Solo, but I had Rogue Even One. Though that crushed. Bob Iger kind of stepped in there and said that wasn't her fault; that was my yeah. fault. And which a lot of it was, but, but but still, it's under her watch. Right. So, but but still, she's got she's got the Force Awakens. She's got Last Jedi. She'll have Episode Nine. She's got Rogue One, and then she is also the one who successfully under her watch the Favreau series started. Right. Successfully under her watch Rebels was a hit. Successfully under her watch she put on Benioff and Weiss. She attached yes. these people to it. So. She's got a lot to yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is yeah. what she, I did. She can walk yeah. away with her head held yeah. high. Easily. Not even all held high. Dancing into any place <laughs> yes. she wants with gold. <laughs> yeah. around. Yeah, She's yeah, going to yeah. Scrooge McDuck it yes. in, in, yeah. in her uh, the, the vat of money. I, 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 that's what I think. She's going to walk away from that. And great. And then they can appoint somebody yeah. like, okay, let me ask you this now. Keep this conversation going. I think we should end with this conversation. It just whatever, keeps going. Whatever you guys want to talk about. Um, I think that, so I she walks here. out of there. Yeah. Do you work here? Do you need <laughs> yeah. anything else? I don't know. Where is it again? What's Collider. How do you spell yeah. it? What's that hat you have on? Discovered it's dairy. dairy. Yeah, Dairy. You know Dairy Maine where it, where Pennywise lives? Oh, yeah. that's right. Okay, okay. Gotcha, I got this. Gotcha. A, it's a crew hat. Hello, from, uh, yeah, it's a good one. <laughs> Uh, what if she – okay, so she walks out. She she takes the victory lap. Yeah. She goes bye-bye. She goes and makes whatever she wants. Um, yeah. Pairs up with her husband again. Frank Marshall does yep. that. Dave Filoni is waiting in the wings. I don't think he's I don't think he's going to get it. Mm-mm. So no. who would get it? Uh, the but, answer to that question is who knows and who cares at this point because – Yes, because I, I agree with that. What they need to do is what the, the collective – over there needs to do is they have to come into design. They can't just make Star Wars movies like movies. They can't right. just do that. You got to make it like an you know, because the most brilliant thing that they did, although they haven't really stayed by it, is when they announced everything as canon. Right? It's like everything that happens. Right. That's because so that, fun for the that's, fans because that's one particular franchise that was able to do that. The power of Star Wars. Right. They take this collective, and there everyone's telling these stories, but there's one person, woman, man, whoever. That gets Star Wars to its core, and I believe there's other people besides Dave Filoni that have that that passion. Now, this is not—we're certainly not the ones who are going to get the job, but there are people who feel yeah. about Star Wars the way we the do. The Feige's of the world, right? Yeah, and there's people that feel this way about Star Wars the way that we do here that are executives. Yeah. I, that think Favreau, I think Favreau. I think Favreau's a contender, possibly. I think so, Favreau's so, a contender. I could say JJ is. Yeah, there's rumors that both of those guys passed yes. on, oh, really? on the job. There's rumors, but rumors yeah. that they passed. Uh, there's also rumors that it's like nobody wants the job. What's your take on that? Yeah. What's uh, your take on just one thing? I know I've said this before, but people mm. rag on me for it, and I, I just I can't shake it out of my head. I think my favorite part of Solo was Favreau. Oh, I didn't mind him. I thought I, he was funny. He was, it goes back to what I was saying earlier. He was not developed. Bugged I wanted, the shit out of there, me. There could have been more. That character bugged me so really? much. I liked that character. I was character. waiting for him to say, hang loose blood, let's order I know, a pizza. I know. Yeah. I know. You've told he me was walking before. right on that edge of yeah. like, this is real world And they killed here. him off like that. Like, unsurvived. Yeah. 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 If he had, you <laughs> yeah. know. The whole crew like And you can't, really yeah, yeah, do, yeah. you can't really do it with Favreau if, with voicing a character. But if it was like alien subtitles. What, what, what's the timeline on this Favreau show? Uh, 2019. Oh, when does it come out? Next year? Yeah. yeah. 2020? They're filming now. Oh, 2019? 2019. 2019. Yeah. Yeah, the they're launch they're of the streaming now. service, which everybody's going to buy. Really? Easily. Yeah. So it comes out before episode nine? Yeah. Right around the same right around this time, I believe. Oh, that's going to be insane, Maybe. dude. Yeah, let's that's see. That's going to be insane. I don't think there's been any official announcement, um, no. but let me but look. Look, this is what you already have for Star Wars 2019. 
the last episodes of Clone Wars. I can't wait. Ten yeah. episodes, right? Ten episodes. Yeah, can't wrapping wait. up awesome. Clone Wars. The Favreau TV series in episode nine. I can't believe the Favreau TV series is that soon. Yeah, well, they started shooting already, I believe. They started shooting or they, or they wrapped They wrapped all the uh, first season scripts, I guess. Which one? For uh, Favreau? Favreau. Oh, they started it, shooting it? They just started they shooting. They started shooting. Yeah, 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 yeah. it just started shooting. There's already some. Yeah. There and it, isn't. And it's 10 million an episode, right? Yeah, yeah I think it's 10 million. It's like Game of Thrones stuff. Yeah. Yeah. There, that's there hasn't been any that's official Star Wars. No, it's Star Wars, yeah. but still, man, that's a that's a lot of money You're for doing a... ten movies. Yeah, You're yeah, doing yeah, ten yeah. one-hour movies. That's gonna be insane. I think there there's no official date for 2019 streaming, not on like when the show will drop, but or if when you, the service launches. Well, if you got to think, maybe a year from now. You can look at it maybe dropping in coordination with episode nine. Yeah. Like maybe we get in October or November. You start binging and then yeah. you're like fever for Star yeah. Wars leading into so, December. So the bottom line, it seems like we have a little bit of a bittersweet uh, take on Cat Kennedy sticking around. I think it's actually the right thing to do from a business perspective. As yeah. do I. She, she, you know, like, like Christian said, she won a lot of friggin' championships. She deserves that respect. Yeah, at the end she of the day, she, she deserves it through and the years so some funny. respect. But when, we can give her notes. Yeah. We can give her notes and say, yeah. "I don't like the way that this was handled." From everything I'm reading, from what I'm watching, from that the fact that there is Star not Wars a lot needs of a guy, it needs a steward. It does. Yes, and yeah. I don't think she has any interest of of being of that having, person. Or well, I think she does have an interest of in being that person. I don't think she has an interest of hiring that person right now. But I also don't think she has an interest of sticking this thing out long term. Yeah. yeah. So I do think that you know there is a thing with her. It's a matter, and I wouldn't be surprised if the conversation went that way. Look, we'll re up this thing for three years. We'll yeah. see what episode nine does. If it makes the money it does, then you just sail off into the sunset, <laughs> right. do whatever you want to do. Right. We shake our hands and we figure out who's going to run this thing next. And they start right, like right. asking, f- finding out yeah. who is the next Look, person. And let's not forget that George Lucas knew um, this lady when she was a young lady. You know, mm-hmm. like they worked together. As kids, practically, as like young, like maverick filmmakers. Does out Kathleen there. Kennedy's twin sister take the jump? <laughs> right. It's funny because I I always forget that we that see her. Is yeah. real. Yeah, we see her. We're like, oh my god, that's it's like the exact same person. She be, yeah. Okay, she's last a twin. one, last she one, be into last twins. one. Are Kat Kennedy and George Lucas on speaking terms? If you had to guess, over under how many times they communicate with each other in a two month span. Do you think like what what's the over under on 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 actual interactions with each other? Two different questions. The speaking terms, yes. Yeah. I don't think they interact hardly at all when it yeah. comes to no, because I don't think that. But you can't I deny that they Lucas were very close. To. Yeah, yeah, but well, remember they're very close in the fact that they they worked under the same roof and they were you know they were doing they were doing they a lot movies of, together. Yeah, they were doing movies together. They were like working the, together. The, the work, the Indiana not, Jones franchise yeah. is perfect. Willow. She did Willow with him. She did Willow. Yeah, I is mean she, those those are the only four you know that they did together. Well, she, right? Is she producing it, Indiana Jones a new one? Because she's been on yes. all. Of them. Yeah, is yeah. Producing. She is producing. Well, it's Lucasfilm, oh, but she's going to oh, produce right. it. Stupid question. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. she, but she was an associate producer on E. T., which was her first real gig. Yeah. Which was when Spielberg went call her up from the bench, and then E. T. Raiders of the Lost Ark. Uh, they were they were sitting in, I want to say in Tunisia doing Raiders of the Lost Ark with Melissa Matheson, who said, "I have this idea for essentially a boy and his dog of a boy and his alien," and right. that was the the. Melissa you know, Matheson how. had 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 that. She wrote E.T. and she was married to Harrison Ford. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's I and guess how that started. And she edited the film. Mm, did she edit? Maybe. Great. Great. Speaking, Speaking of E.T. and this is off a different tangent than Star yeah, Wars, yeah. but great Richard Dreyfuss story. Yeah, Richard Dreyfuss was walking. And he sees the ET poster. And he goes, oh yeah, and he and he looks. He goes, you know, Riley say it better because he told it to him. He was like, "That's." The, people ask him, "Is there ever going to be a sequel to uh, Close Encounters?" ET's the sequel. ET's the sequel. <laughs> he's like, he, <laughs> really? Yeah, he said the ET was the sequel to. He's like, yeah. and I buy it. Yeah, yeah I totally yeah. buy it. Yeah, you know, that was a great different interview. aliens. Go, looking, go, uh, but, you know. go check out that interview on the channel. Harloff spoke with yeah, the well, legendary Richard Dreyfuss. I was in hours. the room for yeah, an he wouldn't hour leave. bit. He wouldn't leave. No. He wanted yeah, me to be in there at yeah, one point. Yeah, yeah. He walked around. I introduced him. He some hung people. out. Yeah. If his wife hadn't, his wife was after a little bit was like, All right, "We gotta go." He's like, "If she hadn't come in, yeah, I think we would talk for like four hours." He enjoyed being here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. you know, he enjoyed being here. Well, look, man, fun episode. Not as long as our usually are, but look, we got a long oh, enough special announcement. All right. Yeah, our special announcement, everyone. We will be taking a little bit of a break. Rule of two. Yeah, uh, will not be here next week yeah. because uh, Mark Sidious. Is going on a special mission. Yeah, you're gonna go kill some Jedi, I believe. 
It's uh, yeah. it's kind of a version down of Jedi. Yeah, yeah. It's kind yeah. of a version of Order sixty six uh, that's been kind yeah, of given. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going on a away mission. Yep. Um, you know, I'm taking. I'm taking uh, one of my apprentices with me. There it is. And we're gonna go try to slay some. You know. So, so that's yeah, very important. So we're gonna take a little bit of a break. Yeah, we'll take at least a week off. Just a week off. Yeah. And uh, you know, as always, there's Jedi Council every Thursday live at 10 a.m. PST. Well, this guy. I've heard Christian of that Howell. show. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, thanks for being here. Yeah, of course. Man. Thank yeah, you very yeah, much. Yeah. And uh, so I'll officially say this was episode 10. Wow. Damn. Of Tenth Rule episode. of Two. 10. Tenth episode. It's yeah. on the official Jedi Council Podcast One feed. Make sure you also check it out on the Collider Podcast YouTube channel. Leave some comments there. We jump in there now. Yeah. Of all things, we jump into the YouTube yeah, yeah. comments. And Apple Podcasts. Oh, I mean, there and was some Apple hilarious, Podcasts, of course. There were some hilarious comments about us on, on the last one, about some of our ideas for... Uh... Oh, wait. So there were some <laughs> comments against us in the YouTube? <laughs> that's they were actually weird. pretty funny. They were actually pretty that's, funny. That's fine. You can like us or yeah. not. I don't care. Yeah. I like to talk about Star Wars. I had a great time talking Star Wars with you, yeah. my friend Christian. Yeah. As always, with you, Mr. Fernandez or Mark Sidious. I am Darth Rylus. Do you like? Did you know I'm yeah. Darth Rylus? Oh, yeah. That's good. Yeah. Republic, right. yeah. Old Republic. Yeah, one, one day we do have to do an episode because I've been wanting to do this where okay. we really get super sweaty. Shout out John Schnapp, yeah, and talk uh, Old Republic. Oh, yeah, like let's all revisit the story and let's really, that. really, you really mean, go you back mean and Knights of the Old Republic so, video game. Yeah. And I have a video. So, our friend, so Kevin Smets is, a, is an editor, he's a friend of Rachel Cushing, and he's He's a, an editor. He cut together his own movie version of scenes from the from oh, Knights of the Old Republic. Right. Nice. I remember watching you that. Sh- we is it should, good? Yeah, it's really yeah. good. We should you put it together it. and watch it. Yeah, and then we can kind of critique. Yeah, yeah. That. I love that. I yeah. love that because I want to like we you know we we talk a lot about the new Star Wars stuff, which is great. But I, there's last night I made me realize there's so much Star Wars out there, and we can have such great discussions. I mean, you guys haven't you know hadn't seen that episode of Clone Wars recently, or else I, w- I could have gone on that for two hours. But right. Let's yeah. Let's talk old republic soon. Let's talk old republic yeah. soon. This is rule of two. Because it's Star he, Wars. His it's theory awesome. is that the Benioff and Weiss show is actually old republic. It, it, uh, my theory for Benioff and Weiss is that it takes place way in the past, and that we're going to see the formation of the Jedi and the Sith. Yes. Now, what, yeah. what, now yeah, whether yeah, or not they yeah. make that old republic or not. Right, right, but I don't but, know. but 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 it's the origin. It's going to be yeah. origin. I, I love that. Yeah. I think so, so too. The, the longest open and the longest closing. I'm sorry. Go longest ahead. closing. <laughs> hey, whatever. Hey, everybody, subscribe. <laughs> See you later. No, uh, that's that's it. That's it for uh, episode ten, rule of two. Yeah, drop in some comments. Subscribe. Rate this. Share it with your friends. You're we're on iTunes, Apple Podcasts. We're on the Collider Podcast YouTube channel, and we're on Podcast One. We'll check you in two weeks. We'll be back with rule of two. See ya. Rise. <laughs>